In this video, we are going to talk about division. We are going to talk about factoring. We're going to talk about division of polynomials for you senior level math student, uh, math teachers. Uh, we're going to connect it all together. We're going to talk about a progression of division from elementary school all the way to 12th grade. And we're going to do that with models and looking at the algorithms and seeing connections along the way. Here we go. Hey there, Math Mo Makers. John here from Make Math Moments. And uh, this is a video uh, primarily aimed at any teachers from middle school all the way to senior level math. Uh, I want to show you this connection that I make with my students. Uh, every year I teach factoring or division of polynomials in my 12th grade class. Um, or even when we're talking about just division of numbers and using that to divide numbers, but also multiplying numbers um, in reverse, uh, when we talk about reverse. So we're going to talk about the area model. We're going to talk about that connection to concrete manipulatives and how that connects to the, ab uh, the abstract algorithm that we primarily start with with our students. We primarily start with the algorithm and then we try to reverse that when we think students need extra help. I'm going to talk about how to do that in the correct, you know, the most straightforward way. Start concrete, move towards abstract. Let's go. I've got some examples here for you. All right. So to think about the progression of division from elementary school all the way up through high school. And when we get into high school, we're talking about we're talking about algebra, we're talking about factoring, uh, we're talking about long division of polynomials, uh, which leads into factoring. We're talking about the factor theorem, the which is a corollary of the remainder theorem. All of these are connected. We want to show you how they are connected along the way using the CRA model or the concrete fading model. Uh, too often we teach students in our high school classes a very abstract version of how to divide, uh, or how to factor, um, and it, it has its roots in a very pictorial or concrete way uh, from our elementary elementary program. And I want to show you that connection here. We're going to look at some examples to show that and build that connection. So let's start off with taking 342 and dividing by 12. And students in elementary school will, you know, use a counting up strategy or a multiplying up strategy. And before you begin that strategy, students have to decide, do I, am I using partitive or quotative division. Now, they're not going to use those terms back then, and, and you probably didn't use those terms when you're teaching this. How, uh, however, you do have to think about that. So we have to think, like, am I, am I making groups of 13 or am I making 13 groups? Because that's that that image can can be powerful in how we set up uh, the, the use of the model that we're going to look at. Now, the model looks the same. We can still use that model. And so when you're looking at uh, making these groups. Um, I could make a, a group of 13 by by building 13 with my unit cubes. And and for there say, look, I could, I could say I'm doing quotative division, which means I know that there are 13 in each group already. Um, and then I could say, how many groups do I have? And so I could start building up. And that's where that counting up strategy or that multiplying up strategy will come from. That's an important strategy to pro progress into the other models, the symbolic model and the abstract model that, that we're so used to. Um, so students will count up. They'll say, look, I can make 10 groups of 13. Um, and then I can make another 10 groups of 13. And then I can make six groups of 13. And then I've got these four left that didn't, that didn't, uh, that didn't, fit into this and I have to take those four and go, okay, well, I have to make a 13th of each one and that can go into the 13 groups, but then I got, I, I can do that four times. And so I get like four 13ths because the other way to think about this is students might say, you know what, I want 13 unique groups. And so now I'm viewing this model and almost like tilted. And so then I'm thinking, okay, I've got 13 groups and I, how many of those is in each group? So I get, say, oh, I have a group of 26 and four thirteenths, and I have another group, I have another group of 20, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so the that's an important distinction that we should be making when we're talking about division with our students is thinking about, am I revealing a rate, or do I have, or am I uh, dividing by the rate? 
uh, in that case. Um, another point in distinction when we're talking about using a concrete model here that I do with my students into high school is have when I have them multiple or divide these 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 you know these these number expressions is I have them write the product statement and the product statement is important for the development into high school for uh, understanding the factor theorem and the factor theorem goes okay what happens when we have a remainder what does the product statement look like oh I, I have these two factors that mu that multiply nicely 13 times 26 but then I have this remainder I have this plus four remainder and so the product statement can say look I have the two factors that work perfect plus this extra number over here. And we can start to explore the factor theorem and going, what does it look like? What does it mean when I have no remainder? And hey, oh, uh, I have two nice factors of this 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 uh, this value, this 342, if if uh, we are dividing by a different number here. So that's that's an important just th thing to bring up is so they it can work into the factor theorem in later grades because the factor theorem is so important uh, moving forward when we're working with algebra. Moving into the symbolic model, uh, students are going to you know encourage students to build on this rectangle, this rectangle idea because the counting up. And the idea of the two factors plus a remainder is so important um, because the model can extend into the drawing a rectangle to start and saying, okay, well, if I've been using my concrete model uh, regularly, um, I'm used to the always building this rectangle because I'm making, you know, groups of 13 and how many groups do I need? Well, we can draw that out and we can say, look, I, I'm still doing a counting up or a multiplying up strategy. I have I have 10 groups and another 10 groups. I can I can fit six more groups. And, and, and remember that when you're doing this, you're seeing what's left over. The leftover part is part of that count up strategy or multiplying up strategy. Um, I've, I, you know, when I use 10 groups of 13, I get 212 uh, units to, to kind of carry over. I still have to divide uh, these 212 up into our 13. And so that that symbolic model looks identical to the concrete model. And the beautiful part about that is is using the tiles gets tedious, right? And we get so many if we have a big a big expression, or if, if I'm dividing up a, a big number by a small number, my model can be can be very long or very wide. Using the symbolic model can speed up this, and students will naturally. Pro progress to that. Um, you get students who will go, look at, I don't want to be moving all these tiles everywhere. Let me just draw it. But you can see that the model, models look identical when comparing the two. And the nice thing about both of these models is that they are flexible. They're flexible models because you could have a student say, look at, I know, I know that 20, I can make 20 groups of 13. That eats up, eats up 260 of my total, and that leaves 82 left. And then I can say, well, two more work in there, and then three more work in there, and then one more works in there, and then I have these four, again, left over. And so then you can still write your product statement at the end of all of that. So moving towards the symbolic model is important, but don't, don't go straight to that as well, because going straight to the symbolic model is like going straight to the abstract model. Students are gonna be like, well, why am I drawing a rectangle? Like, what is that? Like, why are we doing that? That's, that, that question is still going to be there. Whereas if you give them the, the units, the unit cubes or the tiles, like in the concrete model, uh, they'll naturally start to build that rectangle. And so move towards the symbolic model and then, and then you can then move towards the abstract model. If you look at the abstract model, we have the exact same counting up or multiplying up type strategy when you're using division, um, you could you could use the the the, ab, the the algorithm, or hey, we could we could break up the the 342 into its digit, you know, its place value, 300 plus 40 plus two, and you get that same that same connection to the symbolic and concrete models. You can see the the leftover amounts happening in here. It's all connected together, and this is where the abstract model actually comes from. Is from these other two models that we've used in the past. But then this kind of speeds things up. We want to condense things. And this is what mathematicians always have liked to do. How can I condense this process to make it quicker? We've just used to teaching that to our students. We want to make sure that students lead that way uh, to the abstract model. Don't teach the abstract model, then ask them to go back and make models afterwards. Do it the reverse, and that can help build understanding for your students. And it's going to carry forward from grade level to grade level. Because when you get to high school or when you get to middle school and you start to work with algebra, and in this example here, when we're, t we're looking at taking 3x plus 12, and we're going to divide that into three or divide it into three groups, 
Or I could think of it as I could, again, I could think of it as I have three per group. How many groups do I need? Um, I can think of it in, is that in that uh, that quotative uh, that quotative model is I got okay three in each group how many groups do I need okay well I have I have three this way three here three here and let's make that rectangle again encourage the use of building that rectangle what are the two factors that that make up the chunk of the 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 value and so you can see that I've got three you know I, I've got four groups of three and then I have x groups of three here. And you can see that, well, okay, well, when I do that, I have now my dimensions. That's the nice, that's the thing. I have X plus four groups of, uh, of three, uh, of three. And so, so, uh, sorry, X plus four groups. And so encourage students again to write the product statement at that point, because there's that factor theorem comes out. When you write the product statement here, you're saying, well, three X plus 12 is the same as three times X plus four, three groups of X plus four. And when students write that and there's no remainder there, you can see that you've got this perfectly factored expression. Um, there's that beginnings of factoring. It's actually coming from the division. And sometimes we teach factoring as a standalone, uh, a standalone topic that we have to just memorize. It's backwards multiplication. Hey, that's what division is. Um, we can teach it from division first. That can be can be so useful but think about again start with the concrete model because once you move from the concrete model you can then introduce the symbolic model with drawing that rectangle and thinking about what is the length what is the width that makes the area sometimes i call this the area model and uh with my students and many people do call it the area model uh you, even though when we're using algebra and algebra tiles you get that same counting up type strategy. Well, okay, well, I have, uh, I'm gonna divide it into groups of three, and I have, oh, I, how many groups of three can I make with that? Okay, I have, or three X, I got X groups of three. Um, okay, then that those are my dimensions. Three times X gives me three X, and then three times, uh, what do I have left? I have 12 left. I used all three of X's uh, that in that expression. I got 12 left. Three times what gives me the 12? Uh, oh, I need four here. And there's students are starting to make that connection between area and length and width. And so when you go to write that again, that product statement, you get a length times a width. You've got two nice factors that multiply to that expression. And so then moving to the abstract models, we used to just teach kids how to like, look at these two, what are the common factors, factor them out. Um, or uh, important important part here is that you could use the abstract model in the sense of the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm does in fact work for uh, division of expressions. Uh, a lot of times we don't show that it does work, um, but don't start there, right? Start with the concrete model and the then move towards the symbolic model and then the abstract model, which is called the concrete fading, mo uh, concrete fading model. And so the abstract model does work and you can see when you complete the same algorithm steps you would in uh, uh, just a complete number problem, like 342 divided by 13, uh, we still doing a multiplying up strategy. We're trying to figure how many, how many groups of his, this fit in that, what's left over, where's the subtraction, it all happens in that same, same algorithm, even when we're using expressions. So it's all connected together here, and uh, it, it's a nice progression as we move forward into high school. And so when I get into high school and I'm looking at uh, f starting to think about factoring, but also thinking about the division of polynomials. You can see that if I take this polynomial, x squared plus 5x plus 7, I can still think about it in terms of quotative division and, and saying, well, how many how many groups of this do I need? I have, I have x plus 3. I want x plus 3 in uh, each group. I could start to build my rectangle, just like we did in the, all the other previous examples. What are the two factors that work? And do I have any extra left over after? And so I can see, look, at, I'm, I'm going to have two groups of x plus 3 here, and I have an x groups of x plus 3. And so when I divide these, I get, uh, I get x plus 2. I get an x groups of x plus 3, and I get two groups of x plus 3. Those are what happens. But in this case, uh, I, I can use that count up strategy as well. You can say, look, look, x times x gives me x squared. I've used up that. Um, I got three times this x. I got three x. I've used up three x of the five x. Oh, how many left do I have to use? Oh, I have two x left to use. So then I will have, okay, um, oh, right, right. What x times what gives me two? Okay, that's that must be a two. And so you can start to build your model 
nicely by building the rectangle and, and also thinking about a multiplying up type strategy, just like we did with the numbers. Um, it all it all is connected together here. And so once I build my my rectangle here, I do have one left over in this case. And so when you go to write your product statement, you're saying, look, this 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 x squared plus five x plus seven equals well, x plus three times x plus two, but this one other thing, this one other thing, I don't, ha I have this extra piece. So I don't have two really nice factors here that divide this perfectly. It's not factored in that case. Again, we, we're kind of leading into where the factor theorem, because we would be, what would it look like if I had no remainder? No remainder is really nice. Uh, oh, if I had no remainder, I've got two nice factors and I have a factored expression very nice very nice indeed all right moving towards the symbolic method we can still use that same counting up or multiplying up strategy um, we can even record what's left over when we start to think about like x times x is x squared okay that means i need to have three x's down here oh right i had five x's to begin with i need to use up two more x's okay well what times x gives me two a two and then I've used up six because I need to fill in this area of this rectangle, right? So we're building the rectangle and you can see that x plus two times x plus three makes up x squared plus two x plus three x, which is five x plus six. And then I have this one left over. I've got this remainder and, and notice in the symbolic model, we can show where that one might go. I've got this extra one that has to still be divided up by x plus three. And that still translates into your abstract model where you can use the standard algorithm if you choose, uh, or you can, uh, uh, you can say move towards factoring and, and looking at the techniques in that case. Uh, so when uh, the standard algorithm uses the exact same stra counting up strategy as we've seen in all other examples so far. And in, a, in this, this other example is, is a case where we have no remainder, which is really nice. You can see the power of that factor theorem of when we want to look for uh, how do I how do I get factors so that I don't get a remainder when I divide? That's an important aspect of you know polynomial division and factoring uh, expressions that are greater than say x squared or uh, even x cubed, like a degree three polynomial or degree n polynomial. So you can see that I I can move towards more abstraction as well. I can use negative expressions. Uh, and I'm still using the same techniques we did from elementary school, which is I'm building a rectangle. What two factors make this work? Will I have a remainder left over? Uh, I'm dividing up into groups of X minus four. How many groups of X minus four can I get? Well, it looks like I'm gonna get five, uh, mi minus five groups of them. And then I also have an X groups of them. And so you can start to build that rectangle, but the counting up strategy is still there because when you make that first column, you say, look, I got X groups of X, but I also have four groups of negative X. I've used up negative four X of my negative nine X. That means I have negative five X left, the leftover to use up in the extra section up in this top corner. That's been really nice. And so when you go to write the product statement, uh, the really nice, this is again, where you can you can very much show the power of this, this factored form is that when I have no remainder, I used up all the tiles in building this rectangle, which means I have two perfect factors and then I have no remainder. And so when I write that, I can say, look at this expression equals these two factors and I have a factored expression. Symbolic method can show the exact same thing, but we just use don't use tiles, right? Kids are naturally going to move away from the tile use. They'll start to draw it on their own. You don't even have to ask them to draw it. They will stop it and they will start drawing it themselves. Um, and so this is really nice too when the, these these techniques are really nice when you're working with algebra tiles in a sense to ask kids to complete the square. And I've made a video, we'll link below, on completing the square using algebra tiles and factoring using algebra tiles as well. Um, because kids will start to do this in their heads. They'll start to factor, they'll start to divide, they'll start to complete the square all in their heads because of the visual models you started with. And that's uh, that, that's been the game changer for me and my students. So the symbolic method and that counting up strategy works here to figure out how to divide these two expressions. And then it follows into the abstract model, just the standard algorithm, just like we did before. And you can see that we get no remainder. No remainder is nice. We get two nice factors that work perfectly.
And then this all leads into dividing polynomials of degree two or, or degree higher than degree two. Degree two. Um, the visual model, the concrete model, gets a little bit more uh, tough to, to visualize and uh, work with. If you have three-dimensional uh, algebra tiles, you can build the cube or the, uh, the rectangular prism. I misspoke there. And so like, I need to have the dimensions. How, how do I build that? What are my dimensions going to be? You can, you can have students build them. Now, not everybody has three-dimensional algebra tiles. And so we can work specifically with symbolic models. Symbolic model becomes very handy and it's identical to all the symbolic models from all the other techniques we've used. And that counting up strategy does work here on what's left over from term to term. And you're building up the dimensions, the length and the width dimensions. And what happens? Oh, wow. Look at this one. We have no remainder at the end. We used up all the tiles, all of the counters perfectly. And when I go to write my product statement, I have exactly uh, two nice factors. Actually, in this case, because that second factor is a quadratic, we could factor that as well. And now I have three beautiful factors of this, and it's completely factored because there is no remainder. Uh, and again, you can move towards the abstract model, the, the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm works, again, in all the same ways it worked previously. Um, by the counting up or the, the leftover type strategy and looking for your dimensions. It's the same technique you used when you were in grade five and six. You'll notice that all the way through. So when we zoom out here and we're looking at the big picture and we're looking at division from elementary school, those, those techniques of starting with the concrete model and moving towards abstract models does and should carry forward from year to year all the way to the 12th grade when working in advanced functions or pre-calculus class with working with algebra in polynomials. So, so important to build these skills with your students. Don't skip them in grades and go, oh, we did them in elementary school. We're just going straight to abstract models. I don't do it for my students. Make sure you don't do it as well. It's so important to build through the concrete fading model. And uh, sometimes I don't even go to the abstract model. We, we kind of hover in the symbolic model. It's uh, such a handy tool to use. All right, so that is the video on the progression of division and how it builds from elementary to high school. Let me know if you have any comments below. How are you teaching division of polynomials? Do you go back and look at grade six and show it to your students? I do just like I showed you here. These are the examples actually I use with my students. So looking forward to your comments below. Take care.